Okay, <clears throat> welcome back to my new uh, GN4 tutorial. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy that so many people have already watched my previous videos and they are quite happy with this, I think. Um, so uh, I decided to continue with this series um, and many people have already also uh, put some comments into the comment section and I promise that I will try to consider all of them uh, in the future. But for the time being, I will maybe concentrate on finishing my series and then later we can go to further more uh, advanced examples. And in this example uh, or in this tutorial series that I will continue now, we want to build our own Cherenkov detector, as I said, because I think this is the easiest uh, detector that you can build. And we concentrate now on building a rich detector, uh, which uh, basically just contains of a thin radiator made of aerogel, a lightweight material, and some photosensors that we will la place later uh, in front of that, so we can detect the photons and we can write them out and store them in root files. Uh, so uh, now we will take care of our um, detector construction. And for that we can open uh, the previously uh, created construction file uh, and modify that according to our need. And I also learned from my previous mistake that now I put my terminal on the right side so the code will not be hidden by the camera anymore. Yeah, so the first thing which you will do uh, before starting uh, going too much deep into, into the physics that happens now here, um, we uh, define our material that we want to use for our aerogel detector. So of course it should be aerogel and aerogel can be made of different components. But what I found is, uh, is I think a good possibility. It was, um, it was also written like that in one of the examples uh, for GN4, which I found and I will just uh, apply the same one now. So um, this seems to be a quite reasonable, uh, quite reasonable way how to uh, make uh, aerogel. So this aerogel which we make now will consist of um, few silica, uh, water and carbon. So first we will create our fused silica with the class G4 material. And we just call it silicon dioxide uh, because this is basically fused silica. And then we will write G4 material Si O2. This is uh, uh, so the constructor first takes the name of the um, material, which can be just the same as we uh, as we named here the variable uh, Si O2. And then we can, uh, as a second parameter, insert the density of the material, which is uh, which I looked up in uh, Wikipedia, 2.201 gram per cubic centimeter. And the number of components is the third, uh, yeah, is the third parameter. And because we have silicon dioxide, so we have two components, and then we have to write a two here. And then we have to write uh, silicon O2, sil silicon dioxide, at element and now we have to uh, add our elements um, according to um, uh, according to uh, the chemical structure of few silica and then we have to write find or build element and we can write the name of our element that we want to insert and these are the chemical names basically silicon or the chemical abbreviations uh, silicon uh, and this should be included only once because silicon dioxide has only one silicon molecule, uh, silicon atom. And the same we can also do now for oxide, uh, for oxygen, sorry. Uh, and uh, there we have to write two because oxygen is in this molecule uh, included two times. Uh, so now this is in principle everything which we have to do. Now we can go to our build folder um, as I have done already and uh, write make to see that it works and it looks fine, no error, no warning. So the first material that we want to create is therefore ready. And now in order not to write everything again, I will just copy it and modify it according to our water that we want to insert. So we will write basically H2O and the density of water is I think well known, one gram per cubic centimeter. So this gram per cubic centimeter is also part or this gram as a unit and also cubic centimeter is part of um, the header file that we previously included containing all units. And uh, yeah, the same we have to write here. We have to include uh, hydrogen and we have to include oxygen. 
and in this case we have uh, H2O and H is included two times in each molecule of course because it's H2O and the oxygen is included one time. Okay um, and the last thing which is missing is then our element G4 uh, element uh, and we want to include carbon as an element in our into our aerogel. So this should be G4 element C and then we have to write again uh, find or build element C and again we can test everything whether it works and except the warning message that C is an unused variable of course everything seems to work fine. Yeah, and now after defining all these different materials and elements, we can now construct our aerogel material from that. So we will do the following. We will write G4 material, aerogel, new G4 material. And similar to how we have done it here, we can write here the name aerogel, uh, aerogel, uh, like that um, and the density should be very small because um, aerogel is in general a very lightweight material so we can write here uh, 0.2 gram per uh, cubic centimeter and this time it should consist of three component nam namely uh, silicon dioxide H2O and uh, carbon so we have to write now aerogel at material and silicon dioxide and now um, we don't want to uh, yeah as we want to write now um, the, the the portion in which it is included uh, with percentage yeah? so um, we can write so uh, either instead of writing zero point and so on we can write it in percent and then uh, multiply it with the unit percent from our um, from our um, uh, unit header and then it automatically converts it into the right uh, proportion and the same we have to do for uh, H2O and the same we have to do for carbon and H2O should be included with a percentage of 37.4 and uh, carbon with 0.1%, so only a small amount. And now we can run it and test it. And there is an error message, uh, which means I have written something wrong. And of course here it should be not at material, at element, because we created a G4 element and this has to be included in for form of an element. And now we can run it and it looks that we have no error message and everything worked fine. So before going now to the optical parameters that we have to insert, I first want to create the radiator itself so we can see it in the our physical world that we have created. So we do this in the form of a box again and we write G4 box uh, solid radiator uh, new G4 box and again we have to write the name first which is uh, just solid radiator uh, 0 0.4 meter uh, the, the width should be 0 0.4 meter it has to be smaller than the world volume of course uh, but I think it, it seems to be reasonable to define it like that um, and uh, again the, the length should be also 0 0.4 meter because it should be smaller than the world volume and the thickness should be much smaller because we want to see later a ring. Uh, so the, uh, the, the width or the thickness of the, um, yeah, the thickness of the radiator has to be basically as small as possible. So we can write here 0 0.01 meter. Um, and if you study Cherenkov detectors, you find that in reality, it is also uh, usually done like that. And now we have created our solid radiator and now we can go to our logical volume and here we call it uh, logic radiator and um, the name is again uh, sorry new g4 logical 
volume and the name is again uh, no sorry before we have to write the name we have to write the solid which is um, solid radiator then we have to insert as you can see here the material which is uh, aerogel and then we have to insert the name and this is uh, similar to what we have defined previously logical radiator okay and now we can uh, define finally our physical volume to see it in our real world and this is a g4v physical volume uh, fis radiator a uh, new G for V placement and again there should be no rotation so we can just add a zero and for the translation we can write zero zero it should be in the center but it should be shifted a little bit in positive set direction uh, so it will not be in the center where we create the particles but it will be a little bit closer to the end cap of our volume so we can write 0.25 uh, meter and now we have to insert the logical volume and of course this is logical radiator and then we have to give the name which is uh, first radiator and then we have to and this is different to what we have done previously now this is a daughter volume of our um, mud of our physical world so the physical world is the mother volume which means uh, that we have to write here uh, logic world and the rest is again same so um, we don't want to um, create it as a boolean so we have to write false we um, yeah we want to insert it only once so we can just write zero here and um, we uh, want to still check the overlaps uh, at the moment it doesn't matter so much but if it matters um, then we have already activated for the future so we can save that and we can uh, build it and I guess there should be some uh, some mistake somewhere so it should be g4 pv placement and we can compile it again and still there is um, error which is logic radiator of course not logical and now it works very well so we can run our simulation and as you can see here we have the world volume around and then here um, in x and y direction in the center and in z direction shifted towards the end cap our thin uh, radiator Cherenkov radiator box that uh, we will use now for creating Cherenkov light at the moment when you create protons uh, and let them uh, traverse this volume nothing will happen yeah um, so uh, yeah as you can see we have to insert more functionality in order to create Cherenkov light and as you might know Cherenkov light always um, is, is always created when you have a particle that traverses a medium faster than the speed of the light inside this material and in this case we have uh, 100 GeV photons, uh, protons, uh, which is indeed faster than the speed of light in aerogel. But what is missing now is the refractive index. Yeah? So the Cherenkov angle is calculated from the refractive index of the material and GN4 doesn't know the refractive index until we define it. So now the next step is that we have to um, insert uh, or have to tell GN4 what kind of um, yeah, what kind of refractive index is related to a specific photon energy or photon momentum and uh, yeah this we can do if we just insert some arrays so we can write here g4 double um, which will be the first array um, and uh, we can just call it for example energy yeah uh, and it should have uh, two items in that list so we can um, yeah basically what we have to calculate or what we have to um, uh, return from that is the momentum but uh, calculating or knowing the momentum for optical photons is very difficult yeah? so we will um, we now use a conversion from um, from the wavelength of the photon in micrometer 
into the energy which is given in electron volt times electron volt which gives then the right unit joule but uh, of course we will write it in a way that it will be simple to identify later what we have done so the conversion factor is 1.23 9841939 yeah this we have to multiply with electron volt of course and uh, divided uh, by the wavelength in micrometer so let's suppose we will start with blue light which is 200 uh, nanometer so we have to divide it by 0 0.2 and then the same we can just copy paste now and uh, divide that uh, by 0 0.9 for 900 nanometer which is red light so now we uh, define our refractive index in the next array uh, we can just call it let's suppose r index uh, r arrow gel and uh, this should also contain two items and uh, yeah we don't need to copy that so the refractive index of aerogel should be very small. Um, usually it is in between, I think 1.05 and 1.2. So we will just define it as 1.1. And for, for 200 nanometer and for 900, it should be the same. Yeah? I know in reality we have dispersion, so it is not necessarily the same, but for our small example, now we consider that the refractive index of aerogel is constant. Um, you know, now we have to um, add this uh, refractive index to our material. And in order to do that, we have to create a G4 material properties table. Uh, and this we call maybe MPT aerogel, new G4 material properties table. And then we have to add our uh, we have to add our refractive index to that, and this we write in a way that we uh, say MPT R aerogel, and then we have to use the function add property, and let's suppose we call it uh, or we have to call it R index. This is important, yeah. So when we uh, insert the string R index, then GN4 knows that we now tell. Uh, the material properties table that we uh, send, um, uh, yeah, that we or that we send uh, a refractive index, uh, and the first, uh, the first parameter after that has to be uh, the momentum of the photon, which means the energy. In this case, energy and momentum is basically the same for um, for relativistic uh, for for particles with no rest mass like photons. So we can just write energy. And um, the refractive index is R index uh, R aerogel. Um, and then we have to write a two because we have two, um, uh, two values here in this, uh, um, uh, in this um, array. So um, in, in reality, maybe in, if you also consider dispersion, then your array can have much more entries depending on the particle momentum, I mean the photon momentum and the photon wavelength. But as I said, for the time being, we just keep it simple and we only define one uh, refractive index. So um, then we have to write um, uh, IO gel, sorry, uh, yeah. Aerogel, the material that we have defined before, set material properties table, MPT aerogel. Correct, yeah. So we have to now insert our MPT uh, material property table that we created uh, and add this to our aerogel um, material. And uh, this should be everything. Now we can. We can basically uh, run it or test it. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, the particle goes through the radiator and it, it creates some Cherenkov light in, in that. Yeah, this is uh, already very working very well. But you can see that the Cherenkov light is only uh, propagating until it reaches the uh, optical surface or the surface between the world volume and our radiator. So what we have to do 
that the fo in order to tell GN4 to propagate the photons outside also is to define, of course, a refractive index also for the world material. Yeah, without that, it will not work. So whenever you deal with optical photons, uh, then you have to add uh, refractive indices for the different materials. So we will um, create another um, another uh, material properties table. Um, material properties table. Um, and now we call this MPT world new G4. Uh, okay, let's copy paste this. Um, and then we write, okay, uh, we have to define the refractive index of the material world, of course. And um, um, let's suppose we have uh, air inside, which we defined here already. So we can assume a refractive index of one. So we can just write 1.0. And now we can write here um, MPT world at property R index. This is, as I said, very important that you call that R index. Otherwise it will not work energy r index world okay uh, and the only thing which is then left is to call here this function for world mat um, which is set material properties table mpt world okay in principle this should be everything and uh, again, I made a small mistake somewhere maybe um, by writing. Yeah, uh, I forgot the, the number of entries for that uh, array. And of course, this is again like here two. And now we can build it again. Now there should be no error. And now we can open our program. And now we can see whether it finally worked by pressing run. And now very nicely we see our photon here uh, going through our radiator, creating Cherenkov light and the Cherenkov light is then propagated to the end cap of our volume. Of course here it has to stop now like the photon, but if there are some sensitive detectors here, we can actually uh, register the photons and detect them and write them out. There's one photon which is a little bit going astray, whatever happens there, maybe uh, it was created near the optical boundary or we have some other interesting effects. Uh, we can run it again and now we can see uh, in all events there are here and there some uh, some uh, photons um, going away but in principle everything works very well and I'm sure there is a physical meaning for that. One only has to investigate it. And you can also see still uh, some delta electrons here uh, going here and there. Um, now, for, for f just for fun, we can create some more rays uh, with run beam on, let's suppose 100. I hope that works. Yeah, And you can see that in a row it creates these 100 particles. Uh, so let me tell you one other trick which you can do in order to increase the number of particles in, in one view. So you can basically go to your main code, which is sim.cc. And then you can write here UI manager apply command. Um, and now I also have to look it up this scene and of event action accumulate. So now it accumulates all events that happen in one run. Uh, and then we should be able to see some yeah, things with a little bit higher statistics. So let me open that. And uh, yeah, now we see here our Cherenkov, detect Cherenkov radiator and we run it one time. So there is no change. But when we run it, let's suppose 100 times, we can see an overlap uh, of all these different uh, 100 particles that are created. And um, yeah, uh, of course, a higher probability for seeing some delta electrons and some of them have really high energy and they um, go far away from the proton. Some others are only very short. And now you have a lot of photons here that are created, uh, which makes it quite difficult to really investigate what is going on here. But one, one should uh, have a look at this, I think. 
and uh, some fr protons. Yeah, so the density of aerogel is still very small. So the angle scattering here is very small also. But uh, when you have maybe a thicker material, then you can see that now the protons also um, scatter away uh, um, just because of uh, the Coulomb scattering in the material. Yeah, so this is it. Uh, here you have seen now how to create your own Cherenkov detector or your own Cherenkov radiator with simple methods. And then in the next tutorial, I will explain how to how to uh, install some sensitive detectors to detect the photons and then later uh, how to write them out into a root file. And I can also recommend that you have a look um, at my uh, root videos and root tutorials that you can find on the same channel. And hopefully you can then later use these um, things which you learn from there uh, in order to uh, understand the analysis in a better way. Yeah. And here you can even see here and there some photons which are uh, where the angle between the photon and the surface is flat enough to, uh, or, or yeah, small enough to uh, create some internal uh, reflection. Yeah, so the, the light is internally reflected here, uh, which is very interesting. I was not expecting that this will happen for aerogel already. Okay, yeah, uh, so if you like this video, please stay tuned. Uh, listen also the rest of my lecture series. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, hopefully see you soon. Uh, if yeah, as I said, if you like it, please subscribe. Um, so um, we meet each other again, hopefully very soon. Bye.